All right, MMA Maniacs, it's time once again for your <laughs> weekly MMA podcast called Split Decision, brought to you from the Ruloff Family. Science, motherfuckers! <laughs> Ruloff Family Inc. Studios. If you know what a self-replicating catalyst is, please tweet that at SD underscore MMA, because Josh brought that up before we jumped on here. Uh, of course, we're coming at you from the Ruloff Family Inc. Studios. Bueller and Dodge ready to break you off some fight news, and of course, look forward to UFC 206. Or no, we're going to look back on UFC 206, yeah. but Ultimate Fight Night on Fox, which is coming up tomorrow night, yep. happening right here in our own backyard in uh, Northern Ultimate. California. Ultimate Sacramento. Fight, yeah, Ultimate Fight Night 102 we're recapping as well. Yes, lots of stuff going on. <laughs> and, and this is and this is UFC on Fox 22. Yes. That's yeah. coming up. Brought to you by Reese's. <laughs> it's like this sport is self-replicating. In $20 <laughs> bills. <laughs> if only we had and a catalyst. And propelling itself forward like a catalyst. It's weird. <laughs> No, oh, no, that's no. a Cadillac. See, we're oh, already yeah, confused. There we go. <laughs> we're already confused. Like the Elvis kind? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I can tell you this: we got Joe Rogan, brought to you by MyMMANews.com. Getting what is it? New broadcast partner, twenty seventeen. This yeah, is official. My, my Goldberg's gonna be gone. Well, I don't know how official it is, but my Goldberg's gonna be gone. Is it Rome? <laughs> is it is it gonna be Jim Rome? Nobody's nobody knows. Is no. it gonna be Rome from Sublime? Allegedly, I oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> All they said it was gonna it was gonna be somebody that Joe Rogan would really like no, to no, work no. with. Dana White. It's Dana White says this has been my dream to assemble a dream team of commentating, and I've wanted this guy for years, and I've been working on to make it happen, and it's gonna happen. John Shaq. John Madden. It's John. somebody that Dana White wants. <laughs> and then and then you got the two fighters, and then and then he's got him in the headlock. And then he goes <laughs> just, boom. And then he goes zip bang, boom. boom and woo. He's out. You know, if he punched him a little bit more, he might win the round. <laughs> yeah, I say we give that kid a turkey leg from the turducken. He says, uh, you know, Joe Rogan is, in his opinion, the greatest ever to do it. He's the greatest ever to call fights. HBO has been very cocky and arrogant in their boxing production, but they deserve to be. Uh, they do it well in everything else. But Joe Rogan is the greatest ever call fights in a combat sport. I want Shaq. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> All right, so they got him on the ground now. He's going to go. He's going to go for a submission hold. He's got He's got his leg. He's going to roll into it. Oh, oh, he said back up. But now, but now, they're, now they're punching. They're punching a lot, though. <laughs> but you, virtually identical. <laughs> yeah. Every, everything else is, is it's virtually identical. <laughs> right, Joe? I want to know if Goldberg knows his job is done yet. <laughs> like, he's just reading all this shit me like, Dana. Dana, bro. And, and you know Dana's bro, like, Dana, no, you're you good. Haven't, you haven't even mentioned me if I'm on this broadcast team, number one. Yeah. Number two, everyone's saying that I'm getting replaced, man. No, you're good, dude. You're good. Don't worry. Just am, eat your jello. Shh. What am I going to do? <laughs> hey, Goldberg. They, they kicked me out of football <laughs> commentating because I was horrible. <laughs> did he do hockey, too? He did hockey. Yeah. I think he should go. That's where he started. I think he needs to go back to hockey. Yeah. We can, he can, Doesn't he have Goldberg money by now? I didn't keep showing off that damn watch every time. The product placement. Remember when we started getting that watch? Oh, every yeah. Every time in the screen, every time. Like this, get all up in Joe's face with his mic just mm -hmm. to show off his watch. Like, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> didn't they both have watches at they one point? They did have watches at the same time. They were like fist pumping, but they were just holding microphones. They're doing like the champagne toast thing where they're wrapping <laughs> arms around and <laughs> talking to each other's microphone. No, that's the thing is that Goldberg has Goldberg money, but Goldberg has also been spending Goldberg money. Okay. You know what I mean? When you start getting used to that lavish lifestyle. Yeah, but Mayweather spends Merriweather money. He's still got Mayweather that's money. A that's a lot money. of fucking money. <laughs> that's, that's way more than Goldberg money. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing out more Mayweather comparisons because that's, that's apparently what we do these that's days. We do now compare everything to Mayweather. Yeah, it's like we don't even have a gold standard in America anymore. It's so the Mayweather, Mayweather standard. standard. Damn right. <laughs> Brock Lesnar is suspended for one year. Win change to no contest, fine $250,000. Woo! 10% of his $2.5 million purse. He doesn't care. He's already served six months of the suspension. Yeah, too. he doesn't give a shit. Well, he wasn't. Does it, like, does it matter? He wasn't set to come back until a year after he fought anyway. What if he did care and we just don't know it? That man doesn't have feelings. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> one. More uh, that same feelings. hearing that happened also um, gave John Jones his year suspension as well as. Nate Diaz being fined fifty thousand dollars for throwing his water bottle, which represents two point five of his purse, and must serve fifty hours of community service. What is the community service like? We're going to see Nate picking up trash on the side of the highway. No man, he teaches jujitsu to kids. He's probably already done. <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing that for years. Your free classes. Yeah, love um, it. Do you think? Yeah, I mean, out of anything, do you think? Well, no, we know Brock does not give a shit. Yeah, there's no way he cares. Uh, we know that Nick. Someone is already... woke him up when, when he's in WWE, and he's like, "Wait, what?" I'm saying there's yeah. at least Didn't three. There's at least yeah. three fucks in the bottom of his box. 
Did you I think so? At least I think three. somebody came to him and said, "You got to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars from your UFC money for a fine." And he was like, "Cool, just Half take it off the ago. dresser. <laughs> Go ahead and get it off my dresser and probably some change in the couch too." I wonder if he hit up like the video game people. He's like, "Hey, can you guys cover that? You want to just maybe take care of that? Yeah. Make me download from content. Suplex City. Yeah, yeah, make me downloadable content. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hey, have a public service announcement in the middle of one of my fights. <laughs> just stop. Don't do drugs. Just stop immediately. If you've been drinking." <laughs> don't drive. Don't drive. If you're driving, don't He's not drink. Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Could be anything. Or Bobcat Goldthwaite when he set the Tonight Show on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that all together. That happened. Yeah. I'll be looking that up. It was he, right after he lit Michael Jackson on fire. It was funny Whoa. too because he even said he had to do a public service, and I was be like, "If you're ever on the Tonight Show, don't set it on fire." <laughs> like, He's like, "I don't know what I'm supposed to do here." It was like Dan Blazarian when he did the "Don't blow shit up" PSA. Yeah, by blowing shit up. I'm Dan Blazarian. Don't blow shit up. There's a painting of me flying a fucking eagle dinosaur dragon thing. Yeah, with a bunch of naked bitches. With a bunch of naked bitches around me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, jump it over to uh, the death of a fighter in Dublin. Yeah, remember this happened back in April. This, this was, was Connor's teammate, right? Yeah, Joe Carvalho um, sustained injuries in a fight that he had with Charlie, the hospital ward at the Total Extreme Fighting 1 in Dublin. Uh, he lost to a TKO, died to about 20 minutes or 30 minutes after he went to the hospital. Um, it was like a brain bleed or something like that? Yeah, so apparently uh, there's investigations following the death and police... Police force in Ireland are saying that, that it is possible that criminal charges will be proceeding against who? Uh, the organization. Okay, I was gonna say it can't be against Char- or the the guy who fought. No, yeah. no, no, no. This will be against the organization for having uh, uh, what they say un- unsafe. Terms yeah, they, or yeah, they weren't monitoring the fighters because well the, enough. To... There was not enough medical staff on, on hand. I guess. If you're Charlie Ward, do you fight again? I mean, yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You think it's going to mentally scar him that much? I don't know. You're right, Hall, when he got that crazy kick on the Ultimate Fighter, like all of a sudden had to pull back, he pulled his punches for a while. It's true. Because that was the most brutal knockout we'd ever seen on the Ultimate Fighter, and it really affected him for a couple of fights. It was pretty he, crazy. Yeah. Uh, some fight announcements we have. Um, this is what it is. Ultimate Fight Night 105 in Halifax, Canada, going down February 19th. You're going to see Junior Dos Santos against Stefan Struff. That is going to be amazingly ridiculous to look at. Just this, the height difference alone. This is a rematch from the first time they fought back in 2009 where JDS won in 54 seconds. When he had to jump up and knock him out? <laughs> um, how do you think he does? I, both these guys, I have no idea because they, they've both suffered some pretty brutal losses. Yeah. And it, like JDS especially hasn't... Got TKO'd by Overeem? We haven't seen him come back with that fire. Yeah, you know, once once Kane put him out, I, I don't I don't know how this fight goes. Maybe Struve gets some kind of of redemption. We yeah, all go I'll go Struve by triangle on this one. Okay, honestly. Also, UFC Fight Night 107 going down in Brazil, uh, March 11th. This is going to be headlined by Vitor Belfort against Kevin Gastelum. Where they? What weight are they fighting at? Middleweight. Okay. Gastelum, quick turnaround after Kennedy. I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, after he, the way he looked against Kennedy, was that Kennedy I making him look good? I don't know how quick good? it is. It's not until March. Well, fair enough. <laughs> so, he, but he did just he, fight last week against. Does he? Tim does Kennedy. he come in at heavyweight? <laughs> yes, he does. Comes in walking around at two thirty-five. <laughs> we know he likes to. to... Well, the que- here's the question for you: He won against Tim Kennedy, who's yep. who's always been a fun fighter to watch. Tim yep. Kennedy had a couple years off because of being in the service uh, and hunting Bin, Bin Laden and yep. everybody else. Um, <laughs> So was it Tim Kennedy making Gastelum look good, or was Gastelum just looking that good? Uh, it was brutal. No, I mean we're going to talk more about these fights later, but yeah. it was brutal. Yeah, that's so a tough one. It'll be interesting to see him go up against Vitor Belfort for sure. Uh, Angela Hills, um, ah, yeah, coming back was coming back to fight Jessica Aronde at UFC two on seventh December thirtieth. However, they uh, the USADA is now uh, making returning fighters spend a four month testing period um and they're saying that she is not going to be able to fight now this is the same when thing did they happened, just when did they start doing this this is the same thing that happened with brock lesnar brock lesnar was able to pull out um 
of of the test team member the, the four month yeah. they gave him they gave him a, a pass. This was though, however, she left in December of 2015, well after the start of July 1st. So Brock Lesnar had left before July 1st when the testing started. Oh, okay. She was being tested, so she there's no way they can waive it that they have to they have to continue to test her the All way right. she was being tested before. So. Uh, she will begin her testing on Tuesday. That seems weird be... if she was currently fighting an Invicta and she still wasn't under the testing requirements. It's different organization. Weird. Different weird. organization. Weird, so, weird. I still hope... That, I mean, this fight, hopefully this fight still happens. I, I'm, I want Angela Hill to come back to the UFC. She's done very well in Invicta. Um, see what goes on. Uh, also, the California State Athletic Commission is going to be um, requiring fighter concussion pro- protocol prior to the event going on this Saturday... Uh, Fox 22. They're going to be doing a 20 minute. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're losing against the. I got, this, I got this bag of chips over here that it's I just want to. It's a pack of Reese's. Holy shit. There we go. There we go. No, now I got to unwrap another wrapper. We're done. <laughs> we're a bunch of fucking. Sorry, my here. bad. <laughs> it's Friday, man. I like that the quieter you try to do it, the louder it got. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it always works. I gave up, and then he thought he could do it. Josh took it away from the microphone and tried to open it near the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it still got louder. Um, so, yeah, how do you feel about this the now? The C3 protocol? C3 protocol before they get into the cage. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I mean, everything that we've seen with CTE coming out of boxing and football and all that stuff, I mean, uh, we're learning about how – serious it can be and how serious it is which we didn't think it was serious at all before so any kind of preventative measures I, I didn't guess watch are a good thing movie. didn't see that movie no because I wanted to continue watching football and enjoy it <laughs> I've seen the movie and I still watch football and enjoy it alright everybody it's, I heard was just, the opposite it, everyone's like I, for like a month I just couldn't watch football <laughs> really? <laughs> no it's, it. it, it's but these are the same people who, who want fighters to be cordial and nice to each other true but they want, but they want bloodshed when they get in the ring blood yeah, yeah. If you if you honestly believe that you could play a sport where you run into each other at full speed, and you weren't causing some sort of damage to your brain, you already had some type of damage. <laughs> to your brain. Kind of stuff doesn't bother me, man. I watched porn right after watching Eight Millimeter with Nicolas Cage, so it was you know. <laughs> Did you watch the porn from Eight Millimeter? <laughs> no. You're like I found that tape. <laughs> <laughs> then I would be in jail. Hell yeah! I went out and got an uh, engagement ring for my wife after Blood Diamonds. There you go. There you go. It's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you got any? You got any of them? Uh, African blood diamonds? Conflict diamonds. Conflict diamonds? <laughs> Nothing from Russia. I want yeah. something. Somebody had to die for this. Yeah. <laughs> I want one specifically from Zimbabwe. <laughs> we joke on this webcast. <laughs> I'd just like to tell you that Nate Diaz has decided he would like <laughs> to. Some give... shit's not funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is funny to somebody, Josh. That's true. Nate Diaz has come out and said that he's going to get his boxing license to California and Nevada. Um, that he's been trying to get out of his contract in the UFC for years because he wanted to box. Um, he's like, go ahead and do your thing with Mayweather, but if they let him box, then I'm boxing somebody too. And guess what? It's going to be on the same card or another card, whatever. <laughs> I'm not doing it as a publicity stunt. I want to do it because I love the sport of boxing. Did Nick ever get his boxing card? Nick has boxed before. Nate has not. Oh, that's right. He has like four fights. He huh? has like four fights. Yeah, okay. So I don't see this as a problem. He just, again, this is something that he wants to be able to do. Are we going to go back to where they told Nick he couldn't do both? See, that's something that I was I was wondering how it comes never been brought up the whole time with McGregor. Because I remember that Dana told him, well, pick a sport. Right? True. The thing is, though, is, is Dana's come out and said that I, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. He's being Connor. He's got a boxing license. Cool. Am I going to let him box? No. <laughs> he's under contract with me Mayweather wants to talk to me come talk to me right. come like, talk to me it's like Anderson Silva wanted to do the same thing yeah. you know when he was champ too yeah when he was champ but he's like he was trying to box Roy Jones Jr. Remember? Yep. yeah exactly and it's like cool you got your boxing license can't use it can't glad use you it. have it yeah. and then people are making it's like deal. oh you got your motorcycle license awesome you can't ride them yeah you don't have a bike right. <laughs> um, you know and, and people are coming out and saying you know why didn't he get the boxing if you go back to Connor, Connor why didn't you get the boxing license in Nevada remember he just got fined by Nevada for throwing a water ball at it, and flat out told Dana White, I don't ever want to fight Nevada again right. because of it. Because I feel like the penalties were so harsh that I don't want to give them any more money. Yeah. So that's why he got it in California for the people that are asking. Where is uh, he when he's in the States, where does he stay at? Does he stay in California? He lives in California, yeah. I believe. I believe he has a home there. And he also lives in Ireland, but right. I believe he has a home in California. That's where I would stay. Ireland? Oh, California. <laughs> California, man. Um 
Chris Cyborg. Yeah. He's a U.S. citizen. All right. She became a U.S. citizen. So yeah. congratulations. She get her flag pin. Uh, yeah, I guess. Now, who's that sitting with her? Is that Rockhold in the front row with her? Where? Right there to the to the right of her. No, I just see his knees. I don't know. Can't see it. See it. Well, it's like Rockhold's knees. Yeah. <laughs> Is it injured? <laughs> <laughs> there. Uh, Let's see if we can see. Um, uh, nope. That's no. just your There face. was a. Uh, and these are just little blurbs on the side, but that somebody is not that is definitely not Rockhold. <laughs> no, okay. no. Let's All go right. back again. That is not Rockhold. No, not the old man. The <laughs> this guy, guy. Yeah, that's not Rockhold okay. either. Okay, but anybody, uh, they, there had been a little blurb that Dana had helped progress this to get her 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 citizenship. citizenship? Is there any way that they can do that for people? Can it's help? a process, There's right? Always oh, yeah. a way. There's always a way. Okay, always a way. All right. Uh, and then the biggest news to come out of last week while we were uh, not recording this podcast was that the UFC has announced officially they're going to have a 145-pound division. After all the back and forth that we talked women, about with Cyborg dodging the, the opportunities. The opportunities that Dana White has decided we are going forward. He said the plan has always been for a long time to have the inaugural women's featherweight championship at UFC 208 February 11th. Um, again, they kept trying to get Chris Cyborg to do it. She was unable to make the wait in time. She goes, I can wait until, if you let me do it, uh, in March, I can do it in March. And they said, no, February, I can't make the wait. They offered her Holly Holm, Jermaine Durandame. Um, so instead Dana White has decided or not necessarily him, but overall the UFC has decided Holly Holm and Jermaine Durandame will be. Uh, I swear to God, we said this last week. Why we don't we just have it. them fight each other if Cyborg's not going to make the we weight? We talked about it, yeah. We, we texted a lot trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Right. It's now official. They will be fighting for the first ever UFC 145-pound women's division title. And then we will see the return of Gina Carano. <laughs> Two scoops coming back. Um, however, a lot of people are upset, including Cyborg. She was super upset, saying, I'm the true champion. I don't understand why they didn't just give it to me. Look, they offered it to you I don't twice. understand what you don't understand. Not only that, but then she people are saying, well, why didn't they just give her the belt? They gave Ronda her belt. And I was talking to Dennis about this earlier. Ronda was given her belt when she came in because they absorbed Strike Force, who had a belt. Mm -hmm. They did not have that division, so they gave her it. Just like Jose Aldo and Dominic Cruz when they absorbed WEC. They did not have those divisions, so they gave them their belts. They said, now you're the 135-pound and you're the 145-pound champ. Right. Everybody else that was holding the belt, Benson Henderson, when he came over with the belt, he had to fight... To combine the belts. Yep. That's what they did. Anything in Strike Force, it's the same reason. They don't own the Invicta belt. Invicta is still another organization that's so happening. That works with the UFC. That still works with the UFC, but they don't own it. They don't them. own it, right. So they can't just absorb Invicta's belt. Now, they tried to make her the number one, and they're like, well, it's not fair. Holly Holmes on a two fight losing streak, and Jermaine Ramdame is not even in the top 10 in a different division. They're, they're willing to do it. They're willing to do it. And they're willing to be the opponents for the number one, I mean, hands down, the number one 145er in the world. Right. But she can't make the weight in eight weeks. Was she need 10 weeks? Yeah, she said she wanted 10 or 12 weeks. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Like, Was she just in... She feels it's personal. She says it's it's disrespectful. Um, and he goes, look, we're in the fight business. You know what I mean? It's, it's not no disrespect. He's like, I kept trying to get her to do it. She couldn't make 145 pounds in eight weeks. We offered her a second and a third fight. She turned them both down. Um, she said, you know, the weight cut of her last one was... was too draining on her that she needed more time to come back and be able to figure it all out. Um, it is what it is. You know, originally we were talking, no, you have to make 135. And then we thought, okay, we'll help you get down. He's like, we've even offered to buy or get her a nutritionist. We offered her to get somebody to help her. She turned all that down. Well, it is what it is. If she's fully confident in herself, then it doesn't matter. That's yeah. what I say. Right? It doesn't matter. Let them win the belt. And come in go. and take it. Take it. There you go. And then dominate. Start cutting now. Yeah, start cutting now. A lot of girls, though, are a little more upset. They wish there was a 125-pound weight class first instead of a 145 because a lot of the 115ers and a lot of the 135ers feel that that's an easier place for them to go. You got girls at 135 are saying, I, I already feel too big for the division as it is. I, I would rather fight at 125. Women always feel like they're too big. <laughs> Well, they also the the one third just a little bit division. bloating, the, the, or you feel they're too small for division. They don't want to. They don't want to go up. To well, that's exactly they why. Because if they open up the one twenty five division, then all of a sudden you have everybody fleeing from one thirty five and one fifteen, and you fuck up those divisions. Although, Plus, although, Cyborg is the is the money fight. Some right now. some people have f said that they've gone on like Fight Matrix. And they try to find at least thirty women to fill a one forty five pound division, and they've found about ten. Whatever. Cyborg is still the money fight right now. 
Yep. And it's all about money. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense, kids. So it works. you think you get more pay-per-views on a Cyborg Rousey fight than you do on a McGregor Diaz 3? Yes. I don't know. I'd say yes. Yeah? Yep. Yeah? Hands down. A lot of people want to see Cyborg fight Ra- Rousey, yep. man. And, I mean, this could potentially set up if Ronda Rousey comes back and wins the 135-pound belt. Super fight? A super fight yeah. with Cyborg who comes in and wins the 145-pound belt. Now, what would be shitty for Cyborg is if Rousey comes back and wins the 135-pound belt and then he goes and tries to fight Holly Holm if she wins for the 145-pound belt, a belt division she said she would never go to just despite Cyborg. Yeah, well, that could happen, too. <laughs> and I could see that happening. That could happen, too. I don't know. Ronda's motivations for coming back on uh, this month are, are yeah. weird to me, so I was reading a few articles about that. But we'll get to that when we get to the UFC that's happening on the Friday, right? Next Friday? Yeah. So it's going to be it's gonna be interesting to see what uh, what all goes down. Uh, let's get into the recap. We'll start with UFC Fight Nights. What is this, 102? UFC Fight Night 102. This was all down on Fight Pass. Mm-hmm. This also took place in New York. Uh, this was in Albany, right? And this is the one where they're being criticized for not allowing the cut men in that Yeah, fight. there wasn't a... A lot of the fighters were very upset that there was no... <laughs> there was cut men, but there was no, no suture, suture doctor. doctor, which is somebody who does stitches. Uh, they had to go to the ER after the bout and wait with everybody else. So uh, bizarre. For some reason that the, you know, the uh, the the patient, they said something that has to do with, I'm trying to think what it was. Um, yeah, anyway. Can you imagine so being at that, at that ER and then all of a sudden <laughs> you just see like a dozen Eight or guys, so fighters yeah. come walking in with head contusions and just bleeding from their ears and eyes and the fuck is going on? All these in shape people come walking in, just bleeding from their faces. We had none of these problems when Roland was around. <laughs> Damn right. Yeah, when he handled all that stuff, everybody was where they needed to be. We had who we needed to be. They were where they needed to be. <laughs> He's with another organization now, Scott. And, and I'm sure that they had they had people to suture you up. Yeah, that's right. We should have listened to Limp Bizkit. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. That's right. Wow. <laughs> Whatever, I'll reach for him all day, man. For you those playing at home, that's for Fred Durst. <laughs> Lock it out on your bingo card. Jumping out of your main card here from UFC Fight Night. First, just real quick, I want to throw on the featherweight fight between Shane Burgos and uh, Tiago Trader happened. And in the middle of the bout, uh, they cut off Burgos's hair. Does it? Did we ever like find they, out they, why? They cut off his top knot. His top knot? Yeah, like he had a man bun and they, they cut it. They were... They just cut it off. I don't understand what's going on. Maybe that's a ritual that he goes through. Um, that was the first time I've ever seen it. I mean, unless it's somewhere else. But in, it's first in time. like smaller orgs. Yeah, maybe. It's like the opposite of of Sam Samson Samus Sam, whatever. Samson. What if he was like Pedro? No, he won. And and he, he, he loses his power. He, he loses power. He ended up winning. This is the opposite. They cut off his hair and he, and he wins. <laughs> he wins. So anyway, going on to the main card. Uh, uh, Gian Viante up against uh, Sparbooks. Uh, Saf- what is that? Safrov. I can't see this. Sarpabaric. Uh, suffer of yeah this is a, a win in favor of Gian Corey Anderson also wins over Sean O'Connell via TKO Francis Ngannou up against Anthony Hamilton gets a submission to Kimura uh, Francis wins that one and Derek the Black Beast Lewis gets a TKO over Shamil in the <laughs> Abu Dhabi Makhmedov yeah Abu Dhabi Makhmedov yeah that works at 342 of the fourth round good for the Black Beast Derek Lewis who then went to go see a movie Did you see that yeah that post Found somebody with orange hair in the movie theater and sat next to him and took a picture. Said, I made friends with this guy real quick <laughs> as soon as I got here. <laughs> UFC 206 happened. It just did, man. And this is like, this has got to be the greatest UFC that nobody watched since the Dark Ages. <laughs> this is the first card I've watched by trying to find streams, and I didn't realize that they cut streams so often. It's like I would get a round or two of each fight. And then have to find a new stream because I don't know if the UFC's got people on this, but it's just oh, yeah. midstream, they go away. Saying yeah. I never had any problems. You, you didn't have no problems? I've never had any problems with any streams cutting out. Well, not, okay, I had streamed. Not function. that we condone streaming these events <laughs> or anything like that. I couldn't find shit, to be honest. <laughs> I, 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 Nobody I, wanted to stream it. They're all, fuck this UFC. Man, I, I watched, I watched this. This card sucks. I watched this entire UFC via finishing gifts on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I know I went down. Decision. Decision. Oh, there's a knockout. That's yeah, there's cool. a knockout. Cool, exactly. So, uh, hell of a card. We can jump into it here. Uh yeah, I get to that here. Mm. I don't know Trip. what you have up right now. Oh, this is the with the the cut man, the guy that was working for GSP. There was a fight that he was uh not doing very well. Um, they said that uh, he he might be getting kicked out of. Anyway, let's move on. Dude, this cut man, the cut man, yeah, the guy. Remember the the the, the 
big black guy, the, the male nurse that Josh Koscheck oh, God, yeah, okay. got into it. He was one of the cut. The men. earring? Huh? The earring, right? The guy with the earring? I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah. he like, went and choked him. He had a little gift playing right there. You remember that? He went and choked him, and he got all in his face. Um. Anyway, he was allowed back in action, UFC 206. Uh, at one point, the corner was yelling out for a cut man. He went to work. There was only one minute between rounds. In less than 10 seconds, he started getting to work. Um, not only that, but he was using a rag to rub on a swelling eye instead of the cold compress. In fact, Joe Rogan was like, uh, that's not right. You're not supposed to be doing that. You're wow. supposed to be using an end swell, not a rag. So apparently uh, they're looking into uh, him as a cut man and possibly revoking his license. Brilliant. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I can't brilliant. remember exactly what fight it was. but Well, let's jump on to your five-pass five pass card with Dustin Ortiz going against Zach Mikulski with a split decision in favor Rick. of Dustin Ortiz. <laughs> uh, Rustam Kabalov gets a decision win over Jason Sago, and also Lando Venata gets a KO wheel kick. Over John McDessie. That I didn't see coming. Sweet ass. No. That I did not see coming. And they showed that at the end of the Fox Sports 1 card. Yeah. Because they, they had time. And wow, that was really cool. <laughs> Sorry for John McDessie, but damn. Then kicking off your prelim card on Fox Sports 1, you have Matthew Lopez, who gets a decision win over Mitch Gagnon. Yep. It was a solid fight. Also, uh, Vivian Pereira gets a split decision win over Valerie Latorno. I it's, thought she got robbed. This was uh, this was weird to me. Well, so did Valerie Latorno. Yeah. I mean, she even looked over at the corner like, what the, what the fuck just happened? How, yeah. did I, how did I not just win that fight? Uh, interesting there. Do you know if there's any appeals happening with that? I haven't seen anything as of yet, no. And then Oliver Obwin Mercer, Mercier, gets a submission rear naked choke over Drew Dauber. And you know what's super funny is, is that I picked Dauber on our show, and then as soon as the guy came out, I was like, I remember that guy. He's winning. He's I changed win- my vote. I changed winning. my vote. Changed my because mind. he was the guy who was on Ultimate Fighter, and I remember him. He was on the, uh, the the Kyle Noak, Patrick Cote oh, okay. uh, season, and I was like, that guy, God, fuck, I couldn't never remember the, his the name. Canadians I know when I see him, yeah. The smashes. But uh, I knew he was going to win, so. Cool. And then uh, M- uh, Misha Kirkatov going up against Nikita Krylov, yeah. got a guillotine choke in the very first round at 438. That ended your prelim Fox Sports 1 card. We jump on to the main card with Emil Weber Meek. I thought he was going to lose his whole beard. They just had to trim it. Yeah, yeah. right? So. Whatever, dude. Yeah, way, <laughs> way more way more drama than you with that beard. But he did get a decision win over Jordan Mine. Mm-hmm. Jordan Mean. Mm-hmm. Good job there. And then Kevin Gastelum made Tim Kennedy just look like an old man. Son of a What bitch. happened? I don't know. Two years off. I mean, he came in fat, so, you know. Maybe Who, the way- No. Gastelum. Maybe no, just- Kennedy looked good. Maybe maybe yeah. uh, Gastelum just outweighed him and smothered him. No. That could be it. He, he, out he did every- look really thick. He out everything to him. Yeah. I mean, the kid has talent. He just can't make weight. Some he had some brutal shots. There's even a gif of, of Dana White reacting to one of his one of his shots yeah. where he's just like, "Oh my God, Tim Kennedy's dead." <laughs> uh, but that's that's what happened. TK lost. We'll see if he comes back after that. Cub Swanson also got a great decision win over Duel Fight Choi. of the night. Yeah, man. without a doubt. This is they're already calling this uh, fight of the year candidate. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's in the top ten. It yeah. was awesome, man. Uh, and Cub gets a, a decision win over Duho Choi. Uh, Duho Choi congratulated Cub. Cub was very humble in, in his yeah. victory over Duho Choi. Uh, just a good good fight all the way around fight. with these guys. Good good for Cub, too. Yeah. And then Donald Cerrone put Matt Immortal Brown to fucking sleep at 34 seconds in the third round. <sighs> but he, you know how many times he landed that kick on his head? Uh-huh. And you then, see Matt Brown just do this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, keep fighting. <laughs> Like, it's like weekend just Bernie's. Just take it, you know what I mean? It's like one of those inflatable cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the way we'll play the alarm in. Yeah, I felt I'm like it, it was some fighting, you know, it was like some fighting I'm game. Back. There should have been a power bar at the bottom. <laughs> and then go, <laughs> and, then, and then he comes up just a little bit. Start building. Yeah. And then. <laughs> and that's Because the last one, there was no power. Yeah, that's what. That's that's pretty much exactly how the fight went. <laughs> uh, Max Holloway and Anthony Pettis. Anthony Pettis couldn't do shit against Max Holloway. Says he's going back to 155, too. Yeah. Well, after that performance, <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, so good for Max Holloway. Max Holloway now is your your interim. Yeah, your champ. interim champ, and he was calling out uh, Jose Aldo, saying, "Where are you at?" He's been calling him Jose, or where's where's Waldo? Yeah, yeah where's, where's Waldo? Where's, where's Waldo? Waldo? He's like, you can't see him. The guy never wants to fight. Yeah. Although Jose Aldo came out and said, uh, "I don't know why he's saying." He's like, "I already I already know that we're fighting." <laughs> Everyone's saying where we're at. He's all the UFC came to me and said that we're fighting. Um, at 208. At UFC 208 in February. He's like, yeah. they, they told me. That's why he's like, I waited on the sidelines. They said, you're going to fight. And you know, I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> like, 
I wonder if Pettis would have won if they would have had a fight lined up for Aldo or not. I think it was the same thing. He said he knew he was going to fight whoever wins. Oh, okay. In February, right? He just wouldn't have been fighting an interim belt holder. Yeah, he would have been fighting a number one well, number one contender. Interesting. Okay. What so. would they have done with the interim belt? Just put it back on the rack. Yeah. Yeah. Just set it back. Just somewhere. not press it. Like they have it. It's ready. Just doesn't have a name on it. <laughs> Jumping on to the fight that's happening up in Sacramento tomorrow night, right here in our own backyard. I'll be there! Dennis will be there. We will not. Yeah. Will be. We were going to be, yep. and now we're not. They were never going to be there. That's <laughs> how it always works with this group. You never had me. No, really. You never had your really car. really need to go this time. Seriously. Never. Okay, not that seriously. I'm never going to make it to a UFC, man. <laughs> yeah, when's the last time you went? To a UFC? Ever? I've not been to a UFC. <laughs> I've been to Strike Force like yep. a motherfucker. I'm probably going to Bellator in January, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah, there's no, no, no UFC for me. <laughs> All right. Jumping on to your uh, your prelim card on, on UFC Fight Pass. We'll go through this real quick. Uh, uh, Bojack Horseman is taking on Sultan <laughs> Alev. <laughs> Hector, Hector Sandoval going up against <laughs> Freddie Serrano. And Eddie Wyland taking on Takeya Mizugaki. I love that fight. Yeah. It's an old school fight. It's a good fight. I, mean, I like that they're doing this old with their fight pass win. cards. They're putting on a couple just grudge matches, just great fights that yeah. fight fans would love to see. Love that fight. And that's headlining your fight pass card. Jumping on to your Fox Sports 1 card, you have Leslie Smith jump, jumping on uh, Irene Aldana. Well, I don't know. Jumping on might be a little too early to say that. <laughs> uh, Leslie Smith or, or Irene? What do you think, here? Smith. 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 All right. We're all going Smith. Josh Emmett takes on Scott Holzman. Scott Holzman for me. Just because you can click on him, I know it. On him. I'm taking him. It. He's highlightable. What's going on? <laughs> right. And then you got James Munsari going up against Alex Morano. I'll take Munsari. I like the last name. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Brian Barbarina going up against Colby Covington. I like Barbarina. Yes, I, I do. I loved his uncle Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> is that the BBCC fight? That is the BBCC fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cole Miller is actually fighting on the undercard as well. His last Bob, fight with does, the UFC, unless Dana White Bob talks Rita to him. Did come out to welcome back Carter? Yes. Carter? No. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. Ba, Comes out to the Mace ba, version. Ba, 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 <laughs> so his last fight, this could be Cole Miller's last fight yep. against Mizu Hurota. Unless uh, Dana White reaches out to him. With, if he wins, he will. If he doesn't, he won't. Eh, we'll Possibly. See. I don't know. The let's new... go, Miller. Let's go. Hopefully, but the new bosses want to trim everything anyway, so he could walk away with a spectacular win. Bosses can trim my nuts. They, <laughs> if it saves them some money, they might. <laughs> if, if you pay them, Luis Enrique de Silva going up against Paul Craig. Is that uh, one fight? <laughs> <laughs> Three fighters? Do you count that as four names? Yes. <laughs> Craig. Duh. How are you gonna get fired on your day off? <laughs> go, I never trust the guy with two first names. Just saying. <laughs> No, is that two first names or is Paul it Craig? three last names? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Well, so is Luis Enrique. Luis Enrique de Silva. Yeah, but he, Luis Enrique. Enrique is his middle name. Whatever. Alan Jawan. No, duh is his middle name. <laughs> duh. duh. <laughs> Jumping on to Fox here, we got Alan Jawan going up against Mike Platinum Perry. I got Jawan. I'm going to go with Platinum Perry on this I'm one. I'm going with Perry Mason. All right. And then uh, in his final fight with the UFC, he's not against returning to the UFC in the future, but for the time being, I he's love retiring. that he's not the headliner in his hometown. In his hometown on his hometown, retirement his fight, this fucking guy, the ambassador for the WEC, the ambassador. He's for He's not even weights. the co-main. He is on Sure Dog, but not on <laughs> not on Wiki, not officially. You know how many records he holds? You know what his one record is? He has the most title fight losses. Is he really seven? Yeah. <laughs> he's thirty three and ten. He's undefeated. Seven of those ten losses are title fights. Are title fights. He's That's undefeated amazing. in Filipino street fights. <laughs> undefeated. Uriah Faber takes on Brad Pickett in his farewell fight. I mean, of course, we're all just going to root for the California kid. Oh, here. Of course. Yeah. We'll see what he can do up against Brad Pickett. It isn't a title fight, so he's got you know the gods on his side. Yeah, he's going to win. Sage Northcutt had no problem making his 170 weight cut up against Mickey Gall. Mickey well, Gall says that he's afraid to take the loser shaves your head match. Oh, uh, he must have an ugly dome. He doesn't that uh, that Northcutt doesn't want to do it. Gall said he's like I'll do it. He's like but he won't do it. No, Mickey. I mean, no, so Northcutt wouldn't shave his yeah, head. Yeah, Sage has probably got like a lumpy dome. He probably looks like a Ferengi or something. <laughs> who do you think? <laughs> who do you got? Northcutt or Gall? But I mean, but, to me, as this is a co-main event, is that I know they're I trying. I knew he to, would laugh. I know they're trying to build stars. <laughs> laugh. But is this at this is a co-main event? No, it shouldn't be a co-main event. It drives me nuts. Your eye favor should be the the main event. Page even Co. I can see Co. Because your eye favor's last fight, you can't. I don't know. That's why people are going, though. 
It's true. Who who bought their ticket to see Paige Van Zandt versus Michelle Watterson? I did. <laughs> First and foremost. <laughs> I think they arrived. You've got a thing for the karate that audience. Wasn't, that wasn't... That wasn't an MMA match, though. I think, I think the favorite. I think, the, but I got a ticket. <laughs> yeah, I think the favorite picket fight should be like Kumite. They actually remove the cage <laughs> if they fall out. Yeah, and if they fall, they fall out. You know what I mean? What's Broken the glass. Of the cage? Or, I was gonna say it's like scorpions and cobras. <laughs> hey, originally in the UFC. Have you been to Sacramento? A, there probably will be <laughs> scorpions and cobras. Originally, the UFC the wanted a moat around the thing, so <laughs> just saying. What was that one that they had for a little while where they fought in a sand pit and like the edges were like an angled Yama, like, fiberglass? So Yama pit fighting by the same guy who started UFC one. He did. Yeah, it was all angle. Like it was all heavyweight tournament. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. That Yama was... had the angles on it, and some guys would kind of like run up and like fall off. Of... Yeah. Yama. When he was a kid, Looked he was the one up. that always wanted to play think, couch jumping. I think the they had two, Yama, much. Yama one, two, and possibly <laughs> Yama possibly two. A third one. I don't. I think they only got to two. They only got to two. Yeah. Worth looking up though, if you're a five fan for sure. What if you can find that on Fight Pass? Probably not. Dig it in the crates. So Paige Van Zant. First off, Stage Northcut versus Mickey Gall. I got Northcut. Really? Yeah. I'm taking Mickey. Taking Mickey. Mickey. Oh boy. <laughs> Paige Van Zant. PVZ. <laughs> Taking on Michelle the Karate Hottie Watterson. I mean, I like 12 Gauge because she's willing to fight Conor McGregor. Mm-hmm. She's willing to fight Ronda Rousey. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's willing to fight anybody oh, for yeah. the money. It was a beautiful interview. If you didn't get to check it out, check it out. Can we uh, agree that Michelle Watterson is considerably faster than Paige Van Zandt? Yes. I feel Paige Van Zandt is more tenacious, though. More aggressive. Because I, I than fully Watterson. expect like some flying Mortal Kombat shit between the two of them. I agree with that. I can see that coming. Yeah, it, I'm taking PBZ. It is going to be a great. Quit fight. saying it like that. It's like human papillomavirus virus. Or something. <laughs> I got. I feel PBZ. like I should get a shot before I go. Are you guys saying thing? that neither of them are athletic and explosive though? Oh no. Oh okay. Well, they're <laughs> yes. <laughs> highly athletic, highly explosive, tight and toned, very tight and toned. very toy. I think Michelle Watterson is half athletic and explosive. <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure though. Views expressed by Joey Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing. I'm taking Paige. PBZ? Yeah, the 12 gauge. It does. It does sound like a fucking. I see, I think, I think of RVD when I say PBZ. <laughs> fucking. I think you have all that. RVD. <laughs> RVD. <laughs> Rob Van Dam? Come yeah. on, no? <laughs> Mr. Monday Night. Yeah. Mr. Money in the Bank. Yeah, whatever. I'm taking Watterson. Watterson. Mr. The Whole Fucking Show. <laughs> and this goes down tomorrow night on Fox for your main card, Fox Sports One for your undercard. Make sure you check it out because it's, it's free fights. Fucking show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, RVD, <It's> man. <laughs> and that was before the HPV. <laughs> He's the one. He didn't he invent the lift the on the fucking the split lift. He has Maybe. a record in it. Yeah, he does the splits on his RVD does the splits on a pair of chairs. And then he has a fucking barbell. And That's he right. Does fucking lifts with his barbell yeah. while doing the splits. That'll break your nuts. Oh well, that- I know the guy who li- who's got the two twenty five barbell, and and does the the splits. Is that the one you're talking about? Didn't you just both say the same, the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> the Rob Van Dam lift. Oh, yeah. Now they got this guy that's doing it too. Yeah, that's the guy I'm talking about. But I think RVD is like innovated it. Yeah, because like, like that guy deadlifts 800 pounds, does a backflip. Deadlifts 800 pounds, does a backflip. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm good, man. There's yeah. also a guy now who takes 45-pound oh. kettlebells and does front flips and backflips. Fuck that, man. I have a hard enough time getting off my couch and making it here <laughs> for this on Fridays. <laughs> I'm usually like taking a nap. Yeah, like that. You give is. Joey five-pound ankle weights, he ain't making it nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> I live in a two-story house. I'll never see my bedroom again. <laughs> yeah. That guy's a beast. He is. And I bet he could pass a USADA blood test. <laughs> I heard he's an asshole, though. I've heard a lot of these guys are assholes. Just rumors, though. Yeah, just, rumors. just rumors. I don't know anything. I know nothing. Anyway. That's pretty much it. So uh, big thanks for listening. Of course, check out our sponsors down here, MyMMANews.com and StrongboardBalance.com. Change the way you work out. Get on board. StrongboardBalance.com. Check out their Instagram for your chance to win one as well. StrongboardBalance.com and, and WalkieCraft. Get yourself some stainless steel bottle openers, and, even though he's a little backordered right now. And in, in, in Diaz, we trust. <laughs> yeah. Is he really? Yeah. Right, well, well, that's order. what happens when Budweiser, a big order. That's what happens when Budweiser picks up your product line. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely check that out and order for next Christmas. <laughs> That's what I gave everybody in my family last or, Christmas. Order for Father's Day. Cards. <laughs> Father's Day. Could, could work. Dads and grads. <laughs> yeah, in June. Uh, check out our Instagram and our Twitter, SD underscore MMA, our Facebook Split Decision MMA Podcast, our website, 
splitdecisionmma.com. And of course, find us anywhere podcasts are broadcast. Big thanks for listening. From the Ruloff Family Inc. Studios, it's Bueller and Dodge saying have a good night. And Diaz, we trust. Come and do a mini skirt near you. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's going to my pants later. Have a good night. We'll, we'll see you in the <laughs>